Hello comedians, today I'm going to give you five questions you can write down every time you start a comedy writing session. These questions are going to get you writing as quick as possible and also open you up to being as playful as you possibly can with whatever kind of character you want to create for yourself. Enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Comedy. My name is Gary Michaels and this channel is dedicated to new comedians. If you are starting out in your comedy career, I urge you to hit that subscribe button, never miss a future episode and get the best out of your performing career early on. Of course, if you've already hit the button and you're returning to this platform to check out this video, a big welcome back to you. On today's video, I'm going to give you five questions you can write down down every single time you start a comedy writing session and each time you answer these questions with the most ridiculous funny story you can come up with well each time you do that your comedy writing will get funnier and your character will develop more every single time you do it let's start with question number one very simply, straight out the gate, question number one is, when were you born? What generation do you belong with? Write down the question, write down the answer, and then write down a few punchlines, jokes, or stories about how you feel being from that generation. Are you up to date with the current trends because you're from that generation? Maybe you're behind, maybe you're ahead. Are you as successful as other people from that generation? What is your job title and does it belong to people from your generation? There are countless places to go and time and time again you will see comedians on stage talking about their experiences having been from the generation they are a part of. Talking about the generation you belong to and how you fit in with that generation or your perception of that generation compared to where you are in life is always going to open up funny doors that you can break down. Question number two is getting a little more creative. What do you do badly that you get credit for? Is there something in your day-to-day -day life or your work life that you do and people think you're quite good at when actually you don't think you've got skill at at all? It could be something fictional that you just make up just for the point of the answer and yet again, get silly with this. Even if it's a true story, exaggerate on some points of it. Make fun of your own skills that you might not think you have and yet other people put you up on the pedestal for being amazing at it. When they do give you credit for it, what do they get wrong? What is the truth behind it and why are you terrible at it and why do you get credit at it? That's a fun one to play with and it's why it's number two on the list. What do you do badly that you get credit for? This is a point in the video where I know if you're still watching, you're enjoying the content. Do me a big favor and hit that like button so I know you're out there. It makes me feel great. It helps the YouTube algorithm gets more eyes on these videos. So go ahead, hit the like button now and I'll be internally grateful. Question number three is what did you want to become when you were younger and how close are you to that position now? The truth is when we grow up most of us wouldn't want what our younger version of ourselves wanted for ourselves. I don't know if that makes sense, but it did in my head, so we're gonna go along with it. This could range anything from superhero or detective or simply not having to work at all and perhaps you're unemployed and boom, you've achieved it. Make up a fictional character if you don't remember what it truly was you wanted for yourself it doesn't matter it's up to you to create the world you want to live and when on stage but a great thing to get the comedy and creative juices flowing is to write down what it is your young version of yourself wanted for you and how close or far away are you from that position right now Question number four is if you could date any celebrity, who would it be and why? And you can even drag it on further. What scenario would need to happen in order for you to actually meet this person? And then what would need to happen in order for you to get talking to them? 
and then you could even drag it further. You could be six months into a relationship with this person. And does the relationship become as boring as a normal relationship that you've had in the past? What would the differences be? Is your life any different now? So you can create a world that was so based in fantasy that you actually got to meet this person. And then you could bring that fantasy into the real world and fast forward two years into a fictional relationship with the person and see what your life is like then. Is it the same? Is it worse? Or is it much better? Were they everything that you dreamed of or were they the worst person you've ever met? Again, you can see already in just those few questions, there is a lot of material to dive into. And it's all silly in the first place, which means even at default, when you first mention it, it's humorous. So it can only go funnier from there, which is what's great about these questions. Even the basic first answer you give is going to be something humorous. So the more you dive into it, the more silly it gets, which is what creating good content on stage is all about. The question number five is simply finishing this sentence. People should love you because. It's up to you to write down those words and finish off that sentence. People should love you because. What does your onstage persona do so well and adds value to the world? Or is it simply because people need horrible people in their life? Again, it's about describing who you are on stage in the most humorous way and who your character is on stage in the most humorous way. These are the kind of questions where we can really experiment and express the unique parts about who we are on stage, which is less spoken about. Granted, it's a little more difficult to get material out, but we should be tapping into these parts of who we are on stage because it's really unique. Because once you start going to these really creative places, answering these bizarre questions, that's when you stumble across gold and you can bring sections of this into your normal stories and make them really absurd and crazy and grab that attention, especially in a long form story where we might lose some attention from the audience by putting in some of these punchlines or sections of stories that we created through asking these bizarre questions, it really opens up that madness within your set that's just waiting to be shown to your audience. So those are my top five questions you can write down every single time you are in a writing session. And I guarantee you, you will not go blank and simply sit there looking at a page. It's there for you whenever you have those moments and it is a lot of fun to answer each one of these questions do it over and over again and each time get a little more absurd and you will be amazed and entertained by the places your own mind can go and you will be excited to express that the next time you go on stage. As always, a massive thanks for watching this video and there are plenty more. Go check them out. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Join the community and if you want to go further and become a member of this channel, information in how to do so is of course in the description box. As always, jump into the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know if you would like me to make a video on the future on any topic you have on comedy or performance. Let me know what they are in the comment section and I will do my very best to make that video for you and the community. As always, hit any of the links you see on the screen and get more tutorial comedy videos. As for me, I will see you on the next video. Right on.